Hello and welcome to our Verna Talk series, Ask the Experts. Today we are joined by Carol Hallam, an independent nurse consultant in infection prevention. Thank you for joining us, Carol. The, um, there seems to be a lot of confusion on the, on the tabloid, on, in the news, regarding PPE in the NHS, that uh, it doesn't appear as though we've got enough. What's your experience and view on that, please? So, well, I, I'm currently not working uh, in a healthcare environment at the moment, but I, I think, you know, we, we've seen on, on the press some, some really, um, you know, sort of scary information about the number of deaths, the number of healthcare staff affected and shortages of PPE. And I'd be wrong to say that the NHS hasn't been challenged to be able to provide uh, the right PPE, the personal protective equipment, the aprons and gloves for staff. But I think, you know, they've caused a lot of anxiety in staff. And, and I, I think it's about understanding, again, those routes of transmission and actually the appropriate use of, of, um, uh, of the PPE. So in a healthcare setting, we have procedures, what we call aerosol generating procedures. And in those procedures, we're actually generating aerosols where we've got the virus in smaller droplets. So we've got the virus in uh, very small uh, nuclei, uh, droplet nuclei, where, where it can be transmitted in the air for a little bit longer than, than in normal practice. So in those circumstances, staff need to wear something called an FFP3 or an FFP2 mask. Uh, so these are the high efficacy masks. They, they, they filter the very, very fine uh, particles that might, uh, might transmit. Those should only be worn when we're doing aerosol generation procedures. But because of the, the, the information we've seen in the media uh, and that anxiety of staff, I think staff have felt that every procedure, they've wanted those type of masks and they're wanting the full gear. And to just take a bit of a step back is when we first saw this um, COVID-19 emerging in, uh, in, Wuhan in, uh, sorry, Wuhan in China, we actually saw people in full hazmat gear. So these are the, the, the full um, protective suits um, and full face masks, uh, 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 boots and, and, and overshoes and everything and I think that's because that was quite right at that time because this was a, a new disease where we didn't understand um, how, how it was being transmitted so therefore that was the right equipment at the time but as we began to understand that this is a respiratory virus that transmits the way that most respiratory viruses transmit then actually we changed um, changed our guidance, our national guidance is based on the evidence of, of normal respiratory viruses. But people have still got in their mind that full gear. And, and so, you know, so I think that's what they were wanting. Uh, and I think, you know, I have to give uh, full credit here to my infection prevention and control colleagues out there working on the front line, actually having to try and reassure uh, staff in, in in the hospitals and, and in care homes about what is the right method of, uh, uh, or the right PPE, and really focusing on the, the right time to wear it and, and not forgetting the basics of hand hygiene uh, and that social distancing. If we are more than uh, two metres from an individual, then that virus is not going to catch it, it's not going to spread unless we're in those aerosol generation procedure environments like at critical care and just to give you a bit of an example is if you think of um, a 10 bedded uh, intensive care unit so there's 10 patients in there I, I, I'm no expert here but maybe there's 15 staff in there so 15 staff working a 12-hour shift you know they're going to need to go to the toilet they're going to need to have a, um, a break comfort break, food break. So if we say they have three breaks, then then actually they're going to have to have three sets of equipment. So to manage those uh, those 10 beds, 15 staff, so in a 12 hour period, that's 45 full sets of equipment, uh, two 12 hour shifts. 
So that'd be 90 pieces of kit, and that's just for a, a 12 bed intensive care unit. We've got intensive unit intensive care units up and down the country. Some of them have got 20 beds, 25 beds. You can start to see, I'm no mathematician, but you can start to see the maths here that actually thousands and thousands of pieces of equipment are required. And actually worldwide, uh, people are, are, are wanting this type of equipment for their critical care staff particularly. So therefore there's a real challenge worldwide. Uh, and, and so therefore it, you know, our NHS was definitely going to be challenged. Um, and, and, you know, without a doubt, I think there's been peaks where there's been real concern that are they going to get through this weekend with in, in, enough equipment. Um, but, you know, we're resourceful and we found that equipment 